Hey there, this is Jen Phillips April and let's talk about email marketing. It's kind of one of my favorite topics it seems. Uh, email marketing is when you use an email service like MailChimp, Aweber, Constant Contact, Infusionsoft to send emails to potential audience, potential prospects, right? You need to have permission to email them uh, and you get the best results if you email them on a regular basis and not, you know, once every six months or something like some people do. Um, it's really, it sometimes seems a little overwhelming to people and you might even think, why, 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 why do I need to do this? And here's my quick and um, simple answer. Email gives you an opportunity to show up in your prospect's inbox on a regular basis. Now you might think to yourself, well, Jen, but I'm already on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, what have you. Well, you don't know how to get in touch with those people through those platforms, right? I mean, that's kind of like a shot in the dark. It's kind of throwing spaghetti at the wall. You create the post and if people see it, they see it. They may not be online at that time or even see your post at all. Uh, you know, maybe they, they're on vacation or whatever. Now, doesn't mean that everyone gets all of your emails, of course. Uh, however, if you built this, let's just say you built a huge following on Facebook. Let's say you have, you know, 34,000 people on Facebook, right? And they're all like interacting with you and, and, and you know, you're getting a lot of business out of it. And then for whatever reason, whatever reason, Facebook goes completely. It sh either shuts down itself or shuts you down. Hey, this has happened. And now, poof, you've lost all those people. That's the power of email marketing. Because if you've already got their permission, if they've already signed up to hear from you, now you have them on your list. So even if Facebook were to say you can't be here anymore and shut you down, you would still have access to those people. You'd still be able to communicate with them. You'd still be able to make offers. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that is um, exciting to you and you go, yeah, I get it. Now let's talk about what to put in those emails because boy, do I get a lot of questions about that. Um, so when you start your email service, and this is was a third party system that will allow you to email to lots of people, track open rates, track your click through rates, if people click through your to a link, for example, um, all of that stuff is really, really important. You're going to have a welcome email. Any email system you use is going to say, set up your welcome email. And here's what happens. So let's go say you go to MailChimp, for example, and you go, okay, I'm going to set up my email here, yada, 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 put in my password, you know, sign up for my email address, and so on. And then it says, great, you know, what do you want to say in your welcome email? Here's where most people go, I have no idea. So if that's you, here's what you can do. You can say something like, like, Hi, thanks so much for signing up to receive X, assuming that you're giving something away, like some kind of a PDF, some kind of lead magnet, um, some sort of video, something you're giving them in exchange for the email address, right? And you say, great, you know, thanks for signing up to receive this. Here's the link to download this or watch the video or whatever it may be. Um, you're going to get one benefit out of this, two benefits out of this, three benefits out of this. So aim for one to three benefits. Like, for example, if you sign up for my Facebook Live uh, five, five day e-course, then you're going to get five tips on um, how to better you know, use your Facebook lives, right? Like how to connect with your clients, how to get over your fear on the camera, how to repurpose your your uh, Facebook lives. You're going to get all of that information inside of those five day tips. So if you sign up for that, then you automatically get a, a welcome email that says, hey, thanks so much for signing up for your Facebook live. Um, here's what you expect to, to get with this. Boom, boom, boom. And in case you've forgotten who I am, my name is Jim Phelps April and I am a copywriter and a Facebook live strategist. And you know, something about that. And then you can also say, hey, what people expect. You know, in the course of the next five days, you can expect a tip, receive a tip in your inbox every day about how to use Facebook Live in your business. See, easy peasy. So you can do the same thing. If people are signing up to receive something that you are offering, um, then you offer that you say, hey, thanks so much. Here's what you can expect to get from that. Um, here's who I am. And uh, here's what you can expect. 
And periodically, by the way, I'm going to send you other emails on occasion. Um, and now you, you've put it out there, you've let everyone know what they can expect. Obviously, if they don't want any more, they can unsubscribe. But you are you are um, with an integrity because you're telling everyone what you're going to do, who you are. You're congratulating them for signing up and making them feel good about this. Um, you're within the law because legally you have to have an unsubscribe button and you have to give someone this information. Hey, Tamisha. And, um, you know, so that's a little bit about your welcome email. So do you have a welcome email in your email series? Do you have an email series? That's a different question. Do you have a welcome email set up already that when people sign up, automatically goes out? If so, please put yes into the comments below. You can just drop a, a yes or, or a smiley face or something like that. Because I know there are a few people online, I'll take a quick sip of water. So having that welcome series is so important, or welcome email. Now, I keep saying series because you can have an entire series. I'm getting a couple of yeses and not yet. Um, so if you don't have a welcome email yet, what's holding you back? Do you, uh, have you not thought about it? You haven't gotten to that point yet. You're not really sure what to say. And if you haven't missed, if you missed the beginning of this, please go back and listen because I gave you a quick little template about what you can say. Um, but then you can also have a whole series, right? You could set up a three or a five part or even more series um, that's going to go out every couple of days, um, every week, whatever it may be. And whether that's because you're, say, offering a challenge, like the Facebook Live challenge, for example, um, or you just simply want to drip out content over the course of the next few weeks because you're not doing a regular email newsletter yet, let's say. So you come up with three to five different tips and you write them up in an email form and each one is going to be on one particular topic. You always want to stick to like the, the focus of one, right? Like the power of one. Really think about that first, um, the one goal from each email. Don't try to package everything into one thing because it's not going to work. So keep it simple with one idea. So for example, if you wanted to sell coaching services, let's say you sell coaching services and you have three coaching packages. You might take um, one benefit of working with you and put it in there. You're not really trying to sell. You're not going, hey, sign up and work with me. Uh, you want to show the benefits of working with you. So, you know, you might give an example of success story. You might share a testimonial or a success story you've, you've had. Uh, you can share um, a little bit of insight on your process. If you've written a blog post about this, you might write the email with a link to the blog post that they can then go read. That's going to um, increase your engagement, which is really valuable. That's going to also help with your SEO. It's going to bring traffic to your, to your uh, blog, and people might even share it if they think it's really good or leave a comment. So those are, that's one way you can do that. You could do three different emails like that and schedule them out over the course of a week or two weeks. And then that's going to start building that trust factor. Does that make sense? One of the big things about email marketing is it builds a trust and it builds on a little relatability. And if you're doing it regularly, it's showing that you are, uh, that you're reliable, right? So tell me yes in the comments or give me a thumbs up if you're, if you were down with that, that makes sense to you. Let me take another sip of water. I'm a huge water drinker. I drink water all day long, um, for better or for worse. <laughs> So tell me in the, in the, hey, Laura, put put a thumbs up in the uh, comments below if you have an email series or if you've been thinking about an email series. You can go ahead and drop those in. And if you have, um, tell me what email service you're using. Are you using MailChimp? Do you use Aweber? Like who do you use? I see the kitties coming in to say hello to us all. So Emily, you started one. You started what? Um, you started your email? Oh, you're using MailChimp? Cool. Great. That's um, a really easy one to get started with. MailChimp, I mean, for those of you who are, are newer to email marketing, MailChimp is pretty simple to use. It's free to get started. So it takes, um, you know, so I mean, most of the other services have a fee attached to them. 
uh, and, and MailChimp is a good one to start with because it is free and it is fairly simple. Um, so you, do you send out a regular email, Emily? I have this crazy here. Active campaign and MailChimp to meet your users. Yeah. Good. I'm, I, I've used um, MailChimp for many years and now I'm using ConvertKit. I just switched over a few months ago. Yeah, so put the, you're sending out a weekly email? Good, good. And what's your business, Emily? And go ahead and drop it in there. I know we've got uh, people in different industries. So I know we have a photographer who's watching right now. Um, the drop, just drop down what industry you're in in the uh, comments below, if you will. So you're sending out a weekly email and does that usually have some kind of a tip in it? I usually take um, use some kind of a tip if I am if I have a video or something that relates to it or a blog post that relates to it, then I may have the link and send people over to that blog post or that or that uh, video. It just is another way to put another piece of content in front of people to offer value to uh, to to share information um, that they can then take and apply to their business because it's really all about providing value, right? And so when you start doing this, you develop a system with it, then you are able to, you know, really building that trust factor. And, and then you can make an offer. I mean, it's not like you never make an offer, but that you don't want all of your emails to be salesy, just like you don't want all of your blog posts to be salesy. If your blog posts are all like buy my thing or your social media posts, that's not gonna get you very far, is it? So Emily says she has a co-working space with education workshops, small business consulting, and pop-up shops. So that sounds fun. And where are you located, Emily? So you have lots of things to put in your email because it's like, hey, we're going to join us on Tuesday for this XYZ workshop we're having, right? Or different kinds of consulting. Whether you, uh, I'm sure you're doing lots of different workshops. Or the pop-up shop. I mean, you know, so come in on Thursday because the pop-up shop is going to be here and this is what we're going to be having. Oh, you're right here in Bucks County. Okay, cool. I'm here in Bucks County too. <laughs> so uh, what questions do you have about email marketing? Do you have questions about email marketing? Uh, I've been having a lot of conversations lately about email marketing and that's why I thought I'd just jump on here and do this live today because I find that, um, you know, it's kind of that forest for the trees, everything that I'm thinking of and, and uh, that kind of the second nature isn't that way for people who are not doing it all the time. How often is too often? Well, that's a great question. Um, all right, so you've all probably been on those lists where you get the daily email, right? Sometimes even multiple times a day if you sign up for a webinar or something and they're using like a go to webinar and they're sending, hitting, you know, really hitting you over the head. Like, hey, the webinar's in an hour. The, um, the webinar's in four hours. Oh, 15 minutes of webinar. I mean, you've probably been seeing that. All right. You don't have to do that. I mean, you can do that. It certainly works. I'll start by saying the daily email thing works and the multiple um, emails to the webinars, it clearly works or otherwise very, very, very successful people would not be doing it because they're tracking all of this stuff and looking at it, right? Um, and so they wouldn't be doing it if they weren't, if it didn't work. I'm not a fan. I know a lot of small business people are not fans of that. Um, and it's like, it's kind of crazy. I can't really say I'm not a fan of me. I know it works and I just usually ignore a lot of them. I usually send out a weekly email. That's my, that's what I do. I send out one email on Thursdays. I might occasionally send out another email during the week. Plenty of people would say that's not enough. Um, but it depends on where you are in your business and it depends on how many things you have going on. So like if you're just getting started, then it might make sense to send out that email once a month. For years, I sent one email a month in, in a different business I had. I sent one email a month. It was like every third Tuesday or something. And of course, this is like 10, no, it's more than that. I sent it for seven years, I think, or six years or something like this. Anyway, I built that email list up to, you know, close to 10,000 people. Um, I had really good, great open rates and a really devoted audience. But that was, you know, 2006, seven, eight, like that. So it was quite a while ago. Um, and I sent it out once a month. I, if you're just getting started and once a month is like what seems like you could do, fine, start there. But work on building up because you don't want to just send it out on occasion because people forget who you are. So it's better if you can do it like once a week or even a couple of times a week. 
So I hope that helps answer your question. You're in Perkisi. Okay, cool. I'm in Doylestown currently. What other questions do you have about email marketing? Because it really is it really is useful. You can use it if you're having events. You could be sending out schedule, right? You know, come come sign up here for our class next Tuesday. It's going to be happening here, whether that's an online class or an in-person class. So either one works. Um, if you have, you know, but if you just want to put in the content, you might give a little teaser about the class itself, like what are the benefits of attending the class? Maybe who's going to be leading the class? What are the objectives? What are you going to get out of it? Here, boom, here's the link. Here's where you sign up, right? So that's really effective. Um, let's see, if you are a, a dog walker, you can offer tips about walking your dog um, on a leash. Uh, you know, leash walking is you know, something that people sometimes struggle with. So you can talk about a little bit about leash walking, the benefits of leash walking, how to have your dog walk better on leash, and then you might offer a coupon. Some kind of a tip. Uh, how long or detailed? Should they just be simple? Simple is really great. More content or more graphics? Okay, here's the thing about content or about graphics. I'm going to give you a little tip. You might have been seeing emails that come to you that have zero images in them, right? They have no images. Have you noticed that? If you've noticed that, just say yes in the comments. So there's a reason why. I'll share it in a moment. So there's a lot of, um, turns out that HTML emails, which are the, the pretty the pretty emails with the, like a header up top and the graphic, right? Those have a lower de deliverability issue. And it's because they're getting trapped up in the spam filters is what's happening. Uh, because the, you know, it's, you, you set it up, you, you write your email, you have the pretty little graphics it's all nicely laid out and so forth. And then you hit send. And then it goes out into the world, and the internet goes, oh, wait, there's something in here, um, graphics, oh, wow, this is probably promotional. And it, like, sends it into the promotional file on G Gmail or puts it in the spam file. It's not 100%. Certainly, a lot of those do get through. But that's something to consider. So this is why you've been seeing, if you've noticed this, I'm kind of an email marketing geek, so I notice things that other people don't necessarily notice. But... You know, this is why if you get emails from well-known gurus, they don't have images in them, a lot of them. Because they've moved to systems where those pretty graphics, those pretty images, I mean, yeah, you might be able to create them, but it's going to be harder. Like MailChimp kind of says, hey, create your little graphic here. I've moved out to ConvertKit. I have zero idea how to create an image in there. I don't care. I'm not worried about that. I want to send my email out and have it be you know, receive, land in the inbox of more people. So no graphics is actually beneficial. That's to your benefit. Might sound crazy, but it is. Now, if you're doing a class or something, something really visual that you really want people to see, you can post that on your website or create a blog post around it and then have a link that takes people to it. You can always do that. But the graphics themselves within the emails is actually hampering deliverability for a lot of people. So something to consider. Um, in terms of like how long they should be, there's, you know, everybody, their brother will give you a different view on that. And it really depends on how good it is. How much do you have to say? How interesting is it? And look, track your email rates. Um, I mean, are people opening them? Are they clicking them? You know, if you, if you're sending them out on a regular basis and you, and they tend to be, you know, these, these epistles, but no one's reading them, then try shorting, shortening them up, right? Um, you can do. I mean, there are nine word emails or 50 word emails. There, there's, you know, a thousand word emails and they all work. It depends on your market. It always comes back to your audience. Who's your audience? So it really depends on that. And uh, you're going to find that a lot of people are reading on their phone. If you look and check, um, you know, your, your, your analytics, like where are people coming from? And a lot of times they're opening them on their phones um, and that's, like almost 60% now in most markets. So think about reading stuff on your phone. Now, some people still get away with, I mean, really lengthy emails, but they are excellent email writers. And I'm talking to people like Perry Marshall. If you've heard of Perry Marshall, he wrote uh, probably 
earliest book on Google AdWords and how to use it in your business. He's he's been in the email he's been in the um, online marketing trenches for 20 years. I mean, this guy is a pioneer in the industry. He's an incredible uh, writer. I mean, he doesn't write most of his own emails anymore, but you know, his stories. They're all about stories. They're always story based. They're fascinating, and yeah, they're read. And yes, they, they create, they, they produce results for him. Um, or he wouldn't continue to be writing them, you know, they're, they're long. I mean, I, he sent one a few months ago and it was like part one, part two, and part three over the course of like, you know, a week or something. And each one of them was probably a thousand or 1200 words. I mean, they're really detailed, but the story was amazing. So you kept reading it because you wanted to know what happened next. So it depends on your audience, depends on your market, depends on how you're writing your emails. I wouldn't go for the lengthy, you know, thousand word email um, so much unless you're a really talented storyteller and have a point. Which brings me to having a point about your emails. So I mentioned this, I'm teaching this blogging course on Skillshare in, I don't know, a few weeks. And I, you know, the whole concept of having one point that you want to make and having your goal in mind. So I talk about this a lot with your with blogging and it, it, it connects to email as well. Know your end before you get started. What is it you want people to do? Do you want them to go watch your video? Do you want them to go click through to your blog post? Do you want them to sign up for a 30 minute call with you? What do you want them to do? And what is the point you're going to make, the illustrations you're going to make that's going to help guide them to that place where they want to click that link and watch that video, see that blog post, sign up for your call. Like, what is that? Um, so when you, you know, so you might wrap, map these out in, a, in like a group. Um, if you're, if you're selling something like a product or a service, that's kind of a bigger thing. You know, you usually want to send more than one email, right? But you don't want to send the exact same email because that's kind of boring. So you want to send multiple emails and depending on how, I mean, you know, there's a whole launch strategy, which I'm not going to get into on this video, but, uh, that that's sort of separate. If you're talking about just typical emails, you're going to want to send maybe three to five about, like, let's say you're doing a two hour workshop or a webinar or something. Um, you're going to want to send at, least, send at least three to five over the course of a week or so, because otherwise people are going to miss it. You know, they don't, you know, we're all busy, you get distracted, the cat comes in, whatever, you know, it's like your phone rings and you just get distracted and, and that's just the way of the world. So thinking about that and keeping that in mind, but what is the one thing you want each email to do and are you going to be sending multiple emails because you're selling this, you know, you're selling an event, you're selling a, 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 a something that's happening. And if so, what does that whole, what does that whole thing look like? And that's what's sitting down. And if you're a paper, pers paper and pen person like I am, you might take a notebook and write, uh, you could script it out on a spreadsheet, whatever works for you. It's just about, about doing it, thinking through, okay, I'm going to sell this thing at this time and work backwards like how many emails do I want what are the different points I want to make what are the different benefits you can have one benefit per email and each one leads to this thing right each one leads to this thing so tell me uh oh got weird stuff going on on my computer tell me um what other questions you might have about email marketing um drop a uh, comment in below or a, or a like if you will if you, this if this was helpful for you um and thank you for being here because I think that this is probably been long enough, but thank you for being here. And, uh, and if you would uh, like it, um, invite people, other people to see it and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.